so much, Joy, and uh, good morning to everyone. I really appreciate the, the invitation and the opportunity to present to you all today. Um, so my name is Rob Faith, and I work on our software services team uh, here at EBSCO. And this morning, I'm going to take you through um, kind of a, an overview, introduction, and preview of Panorama, which is all about generating insights through analytics. Uh, we're certainly very excited to be bringing all of your libraries on board to both Folio and Panorama. Um, so what I wanna do this morning is just kind of walk you through what Panorama is all about, how libraries are using it. Um, I'll show you a few examples of kind of what to expect on, uh, on the front end with the, the different dashboards that we have within the platform. And certainly um, I'll leave plenty of time here at the end for uh, any questions uh, or, or comments that you or feedback that you all might uh, might be willing to, to offer. So I appreciate your time and, and patience here. So Panorama, this is a platform that we have been working on for several years here at EBSCO. It took us a little over five years to build. It's been on the market for almost two years now. And the reason why we developed this platform is because we know that there are some really strong, uh, really strong need in the market for a robust analytics tool to help libraries uh, make data-driven decisions. And we know that, you know, libraries have lots of different stories that they need to tell with their data really each and every day. Um, but even on uh, kind of the, the larger scale level as well, uh, libraries have um, stories they need to tell about collection development and, you know, how can we ensure that we are building a very robust and effective collection uh, to offer to our patrons. Stories around, uh, you know, how can we link things like you know, use of the library resources and services to things like student success or to faculty research, uh, research output. And of course, you also have those stories that come up every year around national reporting, things like ACRL and IPEDS reports that just need to get done. Um, it might not be very enjoyable to do them, but still they need to be done. And so with Panorama, this is really what we want to deliver to our library partners around the world is, is really a dynamic and robust analytics platform that can streamline reporting needs um, and also be a useful tool for librarians to identify areas of success, uh, maybe also areas of need. So this is a platform we've been very, very excited about and for a long time. And it's been really great to see just the tremendously positive um, reception whenever we do show this to to librarians and and as we bring more uh, more libraries onto the platform it's been really really exciting so just to jump into a little bit of the backstory and again we know that uh, you know we want to help libraries see that bigger picture of library engagement but we also know this is a space that is filled with different pain points and we've done a lot of market research around this we've done a lot of surveys of, of librarians and of course um, you know had a lot of discussions with librarians around the world um, specifically on you know what are those major challenges or pain points that you tend to experience in the space of analytics uh, with gathering your data making sense of it normalizing it and analyzing analyzing it in an effective manner. And I've boiled those pain points down to the four points you see here. And there, there is a little bit of overlap too. Um, but what it really comes down to is, is simply that libraries are, you know, librarians are working with lots of different platforms and systems each and every day. You're working with your ILS, you're working with your discovery platform, you're working with e-resources, and the list goes on and on. So as a result, it tends to be very easy to build up these data silos, um, and as a result can be very, you know, time consuming um, or cumbersome to pull that data across uh, across from different different platforms different systems a lot of analytics work tends to be very manual by nature you know lots of libraries out there have a very strong over reliance uh, on things like microsoft excel certainly not to knock that excel i think is always going to be useful um, but it's just a very common picture to see librarians that are just managing dozens of excel spreadsheets with counter data with gate counts um, and and again the list goes on and a lot of it does boil down to just simply not having enough time in the day uh, and maybe not having the optimal you know staff allocated to working with your data um, these are really all of the major pain points that we know exist out there on uh, within the academic library world and so we set out to build panorama to address that and along the way of course we did uh, and we still do 
you know, realize that there are other options out there. Um, there are a few other analytics platforms that um, many libraries have tried or are using right now. Uh, I'm certainly not going to go through. There's too many to go through right now, but certainly the two most common that we do encounter are the ones you see on the screen here. Um, so for, certainly for Alma libraries, uh, they might be using Alma Analytics. Um, so you might recognize that screenshot on the from the bottom right of the slide here. Um, and another common tool that is uh, widely used is Spring Shares Lib Insights, which is uh, the top the top screenshot and the bottom left screenshot. So both of these platforms do work with library data, but they also have some some major shortcomings. Uh, so in the case of Alma Analytics, it's um, it. It works with all my data only. It's very limited to that, very difficult, if not impossible, to integrate with other systems and get other kinds of data in there. Whereas with Lib Insights, you can certainly work with lots of different kinds of data, but aside from Spring Share products that a library might be using, there's no automation. Uh, it's still very manually dependent on you know the individual librarian actually populating that platform with uh, with their data. So our development team here at EBSCO felt that you know these two tools, as well as others out there very similar to these, really fall short and do very little to address any of those pain points that you saw on the previous slide. And so that's what that's where we come in here with Panorama. This is our solution for library analytics, and our main goal with the platform is to help capture that larger picture of library engagement. You know, so we know that librarians are counting, they're, they're trying to count or they're trying to measure lots of different things, and what we want to do with Panorama is offer a robust analytics platform that's able to capture and aggregate all of those different engagement metrics across a wide range of different systems, bring those all into one central platform with the idea being, of course, to streamline your reporting workflows and save, you know, a ton of, uh, you know, tons of hours of time, you know, gathering your data, making sense of it. Um, and how we're doing this is it is a modern, of course, it's a modern analytics platform. So we are using um, AWS as the data lake to store your, your library data. We're using Snowflake and we're using Tableau. So I just kind of jumped to the bottom there, but that's really the technology trifecta behind Panorama. And how we make this all work is we combine data from different library systems um, and potentially systems that, uh, you know, other campus systems. Um, some libraries want to connect to an authenticate their authentication system, which might be managed by campus IT. So there's a wide range of disparate systems that we can uh, combine and integrate into Panorama. And we bring those all together into, into Panorama. And because we are bringing all of your data into one place, uh, again, the idea here is to really save you a lot of time when it comes to doing the kinds of reporting that you need to do things like ACRL or iPads or ARL reporting to drastically reduce the amount of time it takes to generate those reports, but also because you have um, a lot of your other library data at your fingertips, it can also be a tool to help you uncover some key insights or patterns about your library engagement data that might not have been possible before. So a big part about Panorama is that it is a vendor agnostic uh, or vendor neutral platform. Uh, and this is something that we are we, we are very excited about because we really did set out to design Panorama to become that optimal analytics platform for every library out there, regardless of whether you're using Alma or, or Folio. Um, it's great that you're all coming on board to, to Folio, but you will see in a, in a few moments here that we do also support a number of other you know, non-EBSCO ecosystem uh, platforms and systems as well. So it's vendor agnostic. On the front end of Panorama, uh, for which we are using Tableau, again, we have a number of dynamic dashboards. Um, these are all customizable, they're configurable. Uh, you do have the option of creating your own dashboards uh, and Tableau really is a wonderful tool as far as just the, the sheer capabilities of being able to work with your data in a multitude of different ways and a multitude of different, different levels. And another big part of Panorama development has also centered around uh, building out those new data source integrations, which I'll go into in, in more detail in a, in a second here, but uh, basically working with, with libraries from day one of Panorama development to identify, you know, what are those key library and campus systems out there that 
you know, so many libraries are using different ILS systems, um, authentication platforms, link resolver tools, um, things like that, working with those libraries to map out and build those data pipelines. And then once we do have those integrations in place, uh, then we can offer those connections to libraries out there that are using Panorama. Um, so Panorama is also a solution that can, uh, can continue to grow over time for each and every library. And this is really what, what you see here is kind of a visual representation of where we are with the status quo when it comes to working with, working with data, when it comes to library analytics, and ultimately what we want to help libraries move to with Panorama. So the left-hand display, the left-hand time graphic you see there is really what we've identified as the typical workflow when it comes to libraries working with their data. And as you can see from that graph, the vast majority of time is really eaten up just simply with the, the data harvest and the data manipulation tends to leave little time to actually analyze and dig into your library data do the kinds of reporting that you need this is without panorama but with panorama because we are managing that data architecture for our customers on the back end um, we're putting those um, those data source integrations in place we are automating as much of that workflow as possible. Um, and depending on, depending on the mix of data source connections that a library wants to have, you still might see a little bit of purple, a little bit of green. Some data sources do require a little more manual effort. They might not be 100% automated, but that's okay. We're really trying to move the needle as close to 100% automation as possible so that librarians can spend far more time effectively working with their data, doing the kinds of reporting they need to do, like national reporting, um, as well as just being able to spend far more time, you know, dedicated to other library tasks or other library priorities. So, of course, a major value that we're delivering with Panorama is just saving librarians tremendous amounts of time um, so that they can do the data work they need to, but also other, uh, other things as well. And so I mentioned a key piece of Panorama development as centering around those data source integrations. And I uh, just wanted to spend a couple of minutes speaking to that a little more. Uh, so this on the slide you see here, which is slightly out of date, um, we do need to update this, um, I do realize now, but all of the different systems and tools you see in the green part of the slide are integrations that are currently available with Panorama. Um, it says we have 22, I think we are up to 24, maybe 25. Um, we can certainly make sure that you all are, are updated as we move along there. But this is a good, uh, certainly a good example of seeing kind of a mix of both EBSCO and non-EBSCO data sources. Um, so of course we have integrations with, with Folio, but we also have integrations with Alma, several Ex Libris products, Easy Proxy, different SpringShare products. Um, so also a, a very nice mix of different kinds of systems or different kinds of tools that libraries are using each and every day. We're able to connect to those sources and bring that data into Panorama. And then what you see on the bottom of the slide in the orange piece, um, those are some examples of data source integrations that we currently have in active development. Uh, again, you can see a wide range of different systems here from interlibrary loan systems like Rapid, uh, WorldShare. Um, and we're also working working on integrations to systems like DSpace or, or Digital Commons. Um, so there's lots of, uh, we have a fairly extensive uh, product roadmap of integrations that are in progress as well. And again, this is something that we really have done from day one with Panorama is, you know, as we bring more libraries on board and we learn about what systems they're using and what could also become a, a very useful um, and widely used integration for, for the platform. So this list will continue to grow over time. And of course, now I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about what exactly we will be delivering uh, in terms of Panorama, what we will be delivering for Galileo libraries. And again, we're really excited to have you all on board here. Um, and so this is a very, not even, I wouldn't even call this a, not, not a good timeline here, um, but basically each Galileo library will be getting their own instance of full what we call full panorama so it's uh, really an enhanced version of, of panorama I'll jump uh, into more detail with that um, in a couple of a couple of moments here 
all of these panorama instances will be installed prior to your folio go live. Um, I can't remember exactly when that go live date is. I believe it's at some point in, in 2025. So we will be bringing each of your libraries on board to Panorama prior to that migration, um, which means that in the meantime, we will be connecting each library to um, your Alma instances. So you'll, you'll be able to work with your Alma data in the interim period within Panorama. So you'll still be able to get the full functionality of Panorama and take advantage of all the capabilities that we can deliver with that platform, um, even before your libraries make the switch to Folio. Once we do make that switch, if a library does want to hold on to their legacy Alma data, and this is something that we're finding, you know, some libraries will find this valuable, and this is something that we have uh, started exploring with uh, with some libraries in the Mobius Consortium um, migrating from Sierra to Folio. But um, Panorama can also be used as basically an archive for your old ILS data. Um, so it will be optional for any libraries out there, any Galileo libraries who want to use uh, Panorama to store their legacy Alma data following the Folio migration. That's certainly something we can explore with you all as well. And again, it will be totally optional, uh, totally optional. But what I'm going to focus on today uh, for the rest of the presentation here and as I jump into the, the live demo part of the platform, uh, we will be providing a panorama instance that includes five uh, data source connections. And these five data source connections are those that are able to optimize the ACRL and the iPads uh, reporting capabilities within panorama. So you can see the five listed um, under that last bullet there. Um, so that will include your ILS, which at the moment will be Alma, then it will become Folio, um, Counter, Interlibrary Loan, uh, your Interlibrary Loan System, your reference and instruction data, and gate counts. Um, so with those five, with those five data source connections, we can optimize um, the output that you can get from the ACRL and the iPads uh, dashboards, which I'll show you momentarily here. Altogether, and this number will change over time, um, but by my count, each Galileo library should be getting, <clears throat> excuse me, should be getting 15 total dashboards uh, once everything is set up. Um, this number will probably change, or in fact, it will change over time um, as we continue to roll out new folio specific dashboards. Um, those get rolled out to every folio library, you know, for free basically. Um, but thereafter, um, you know, once every library is onboarded to Panorama, should they decide to purchase additional data source connections, um, on, you know, each library has the option of doing that, um, then that number of dashboards will also increase as well. Um, so I'll talk, I'm happy to talk more about that as, as we go on. All right, so with that, um, I hope that was a useful kind of overview and introduction or recap of the Panorama platform. And right now I'm gonna jump out of the deck and into the live platform here. Not there, this is better. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is take you into the Panorama platform. I'm gonna show you the demo environment. Uh, and so for this, uh, for the demo environment, we basically were working with anonymized customer data from a number of different customers just for demo purposes and we've gotten their permission to do so. So we are using Tableau here. Um, so if you are familiar with that, uh, with that system, this should all look very familiar to you as well. Tableau, again, is really that um, the only part of Panorama, just that front end data visualization piece that all of you would be working with, um, because behind the scenes, we have our team of engineers that will be you know, putting your data source integrations uh, pipelines in place for you. Um, so all of that data will automatically feed into, into Panorama. Um, we do have, uh, in terms of uh, data privacy, data security, and I suspect a lot of this is, is similar with Folio as well, but because we are using AWS and Tableau and Snowflake, a lot of our protocols around data security and privacy derive from those three services um, specifically. Uh, so again, whenever we do, whenever we will onboard your, uh, your libraries to Panorama, you will basically be working with a team of our data analysts or, or data engineers here at EBSCO. They'll be putting those pipelines in place for you. They'll be working with you to make sure that, you know, your data is, um, you know, it's mapping correctly, that there are no issues there. If there are any issues, uh, so for instance, if, um, 
if we are not receiving an automated data harvest when we would expect to, or if there is something else, uh, some other issues with your data, um, that team will flag will flag it and, and let you know so that you can uh, that problem can be resolved. But otherwise, the rest of EBSCO is completely firewalled off from from your data. So we have it explicitly in our license agreement that we can't. You know, we're not going to go into Panorama and look at your different usage. Um, you know what's what what you're what you're using, what you're working with. So I did want to mention that. So because we are using Tableau, uh, there are different levels of. Um, uh, of users within Tableau within the platform. Um, so we do provide, we will provide each library with a number of what are called viewer licenses. So that will allow the user to go into Panorama and basically be able to work in uh, any dashboard they want to. But we also do include uh, for each, each library, we will include um, at least one Tableau Explorer license and with the Explorer license that grants the user the ability to to not only to view the dashboards, um, but he or she can also go in and they can create custom dashboards if they want to, uh, or they can modify existing dashboards. Um, any of the pre built dashboards that we've already made here at EBSCO, you can certainly go in and, and make changes to those as well. So if you do build any custom dashboards, you'll find those here in the custom dashboard folder. But otherwise, uh, if we jump into the standard dashboards folder, um, you will see all of the different dashboards that we have pre-built already. And when I say pre-built, of course, that means that these are all dashboards that we have built in partnership with libraries that have um, that have onboarded to to Panorama. So this is really built up over a number of years now. We have about 30 total um, dashboards and because I'm working in the demo environment, um, all of the all of the dashboards are available here. We have about excuse me about 30. So these are all pulling, they're all in alphabetical order. They're all pulling from a number of different um, data sources. Some are pulling from a single data source, uh, something like Easy Proxy, for example, is just pulling in data from those uh, Easy Proxy transaction logs. And we also have a number of dashboards that are aggregating data from a, a number of different uh, data sources simultaneously. So a lot of different views within, within Panorama designed to help you see that bigger picture of library engagement. And what I have done for the purposes of this presentation is I've tried to go through the list of the dashboard list here and flag all of the dashboards that um, your libraries can expect to have available. So once everything is all set and done with Panorama imp implementations, um, you should have access to at least these 15 dashboards um, right here. So some of these dashboards, um, again, are pulling from, you know, your ILS, whether it's Alma at the moment or, um, you know, and, and Folio uh, down the road once that migration is complete. We do have a couple of dashboards listed here that are Folio specific. Um, so the orders dashboard here, for, for example, we have a couple of other ones. And we do have a number of dashboards in development at the moment right now um, as well that are kind of Folio specific dashboards. And I think I mentioned this earlier, but once we do have those dashboards ready to go, those will be rolled out to each to every Folio library that's using using Panorama. So what I wanted to do here is just walk you through a small handful of different uh, different dashboards just to give you an idea of the look and feel of them um, and, and kind of give you an idea of what you all can expect once you are working with the platform uh, right out of the gate when you're still you, you know working with your Alma data, but also down the road once you're migrated to Folio um, and you're using Panorama at that point. And so within Panorama, we have a number of different dashboards that are really designed to give you just kind of a, a wide range of different views, both high level and, and micro level. Usually a good place to start within Panorama is something like the library overview dashboard, which is what you're looking at right now. And this one is really designed just to give you that uh, kind of high level picture of how your library is doing, just taking the pulse of the library across whichever metrics you would want to see represented here. Um, so what you're seeing here, this is actually taken, I think, from, a, from an Alma library. Um, so this is an example of what your overview dashboard can look like. In this, in this particular example, we have we can get some very you know quick circulation data um, data around e-resource usage patron data budgetary and acquisitions data so you can see a couple of different visualizations represented here in your overview dashboard uh, again really designed to give you that quick snapshot of how your library is doing um, each 
dashboard has a number of filters along the top right here. Um, because we're looking at the overview dashboard, we're only limited to um, a date, uh, a date filter. But as I go into other dashboards, you'll see other filters available as well. So if you do want to go back in time, um, you know, whenever you toggle any of the date filters, you'll see that all of the data here will refresh um, automatically in near real time. There are no data caps with Panorama, so you can um, you can really go back as far in time with your data as as that data allows, as that data source allows. So, for example, if you did have you know ten years of Alma data loaded into Panorama, you could certainly go back in time uh, ten years into your Alma data. But for your counter data, if that's being taken from usage consolidation, that is not going to go probably won't go back that far. But it's completely up to you as far as what your overview dashboard looks like. And this is something that uh, certainly might look different for every library. And it might also change over time. Um, maybe maybe at your library, you would like to add a connection down the road to, um, to your easy proxy. You want to get that data into Panorama. And if you wanted to do so at that point, we could could certainly add that um, add that easy proxy data into your your overview dashboard. So it's completely up to you. Uh, just think of this as one example of of what's possible with with this and other dashboards. And then from here, this also functions as a kind of gateway into more. Uh, I'll just show you one more example here into more detailed dashboards. Um, uh, depending on which specific area you're you're interested in looking at. So when I click on the e-resource um, e resource usage from the overview, it'll take me straight to our e-resource usage uh, dashboard here. So we do have a number of dashboards that are pulling in uh, your counter data, but this e-resource dashboard is, is really designed to kind of summarize how your various e-resources are being used across your institution. Um, so you can see those, again, high level high level numbers around things like total item requests, you know, what the difference is over the previous year, um, how that is trending over time. And now because we are looking at a more, a more specific area of data, that being counter, uh, counter usage, we can also filter by, uh, a we have a few other options to filter by too. So if we want to, you know, look at e-journals or databases or e-books, if we want to look at e-book usage, I can filter to that. And then all of the data in these in these visualizations will change uh, to represent ebook usage. So now we can see get a better idea of total ebook usage, how that is trending over time, um, and we can also do some uh, kind of cross-platform comparison um, work within this dashboard as well. Um, so different filtering, different ways of filtering through your counter data, we can filter by platform, we can filter by, by publisher. This dashboard is pulling data from our usage consolidation service, which you will all be getting um, as well as we onboard you to, um, to Folio and Panorama. So we certainly have e-resource usage covered here. Um, and one other, uh, other dashboard I wanted to show. Um, and this is an example taken from uh, from an Alma library. There's lots of different data that you can uh, that you can have stored within Panorama, lots of different kinds of data you can look at, including your budgetary and your acquisitions data. Uh, so what I'm showing you right now is an example of one of those dashboards. Uh, this is our collections budget overview dashboard. And again, you'll notice that there is um, uh, they, a lot of these dashboards do follow uh, a similar kind of pattern whereby the very, you know, the very first, uh, first one or two uh, visualizations you see on the dashboard are really giving you that kind of high level, how is, um, how is this data trending over time? Uh, so we can look at total budget spend and we're in, uh, we're in the current fiscal year. But if we want to go back to uh, a previous fiscal year, if we want to go back to FY18, so now we have now we're looking at a full year of data within this dashboard here, and you can see in this year, this particular library did overspend um, by a bit. So you can see you know how that how spending was trending over time, and when this library started to go into the red. Um, so giving you that high level view there, and then we also have a number of other ways of representing your your acquisitions data and and really being able to show things like purchasing patterns. So if you look at the scatter plot um, top reporting funds to the right of to the right of that, now we can see and I realize this might be I hope this isn't too too tiny. Sorry, I'm sorry if that is, but this is really showing all of the different um, purchasing categories and all of the every, basically every expenditure that this library made during this fiscal year. 
so every purchase here is actually plotted on this um, this grid here so it makes it very easy to identify purchasing patterns as well as identifying outliers in your data in this case being able to quickly identify outliers in purchasing patterns. So anything that is plotted farther to the right here on this graph corresponds to more of a big, you know, big ticket purchase. So of course, uh, you know, um, perpetual access or e-journal packages you're going to expect to see here. But this can make it very easy to identify, to also identify, you know, things that might not look right if you do see a purchase that seems odd and you're not sure, you know, what that is, that would show up here in this dashboard. And then you could investigate into, you know, what that, uh, what that purchase was. And then we can also take that same budgetary data, break it down by fund type, by, by subject area, um, so there's different ways of working with your, your budgetary and acquisitions data within Panorama as well. So these first three are kind of examples of more, uh, more, more basic dashboards that you can all expect to use, um, just pulling from you know, Alma in the, in the near term, Folio um, down the road. But again, what we are delivering for Galileo libraries also includes the data source connections that are needed to optimize the national reporting, um, the national reports, the ACRL and the IPEDS reports as well. Um, so that has, has certainly become uh, the most common and the most important use case for Panorama. We actually did not have these available at launch, at product launch, but very quickly, you know, we spoke to a number of librarians who um, liked what they saw with Panorama, but they also asked us how we could use the platform. How could we leverage Panorama to help, you know, streamline things like ACRL and iPads reporting? This is a very common pain point that so many libraries have, you know, not just in the States, but we're also finding around different regions around the world as well that have their own analog reports to ACRL or iPads. Um, how can we use our analytics platform Panorama to really streamline that reporting process and thereby reduce, you know, drastically reduce the amount of time that it takes librarians to complete these each and every year. So that's exactly what we've done with Panorama. And this is also a capability that each of your libraries will be getting as well. So you're looking at the ACRL report dashboard right now. Um, and so for this, as well as the iPads dashboard, we're pulling in data from all of the relevant systems that are needed to generate these reports. So in the case of ACRL and iPads, um, again, those systems include your ILS, your counter data, your interlibrary loan data, reference and instruction, and gate counts. So we're pulling in all of that data into these uh, into these dashboards, with the idea being to automate as much of these reports as possible. There are still a couple of um, systems that we're currently working on that um, that are required. There are questions about those uh, within these reports, um, like your institutional repository. Um, so we don't have everything 100% covered at the moment. Um, but if we do have those five uh, data sources that I just named, if we do have those connected, um, these dashboards can automate about 75% of ACRL and, and iPads reporting. So this is ACRL. And again, we have a, a dedicated dashboard for, uh, for iPads as well. And very much the same, very much the same thing. This is a subset of, of ACRL. So we're generating as much of that data automatically as we, as we can. Uh, we can hit about 75% of it right now. And we also are aware that these reports tend to change over time um, fairly frequently it seems as well so um, we do know that um, these reports uh, do change over time um, maybe certain questions are added or they're altered in in one way or another so what we will be doing moving forward is monitoring these reports um, each and every year to make sure that the questions are you know if there are new questions or if the reports do change then it is on us here at EBSCO to make sure that we are updating the data mart to uh, the data fields to reflect um, to reflect those those changes to the reports. So we certainly want to make sure we will make sure that um, these national reporting dashboards never become obsolete. They are always up to date. Um, and again, over time, as we um, 
as we add additional data source connections, it might actually be possible to automate more than 75% of, of these reports um, as well. So that's really the basic idea here. With Panorama, you know, we certainly want you to be able to work with your library data, um, lots of different kinds of library data in very dynamic, very interesting and meaningful ways. But we also want to make sure that within, within Panorama, you can use this platform to really streamline these national reports that you need to be doing each and every year as well to save you time, save you headaches and, and aggravation so that you can do you know, bigger and better, uh, better things as well. So that um, those are a few example dashboards of what you can all expect once we do onboard you uh, to Panorama. But um, there are, again, there are a number of other data source integrations that we do have um, for Panorama as well. So again, down the road, Panorama is designed to gr it continuously grow or evolve to accommodate your evolving needs when it comes to the kinds of data that you want to work with or the kinds of reporting that you want to do. So I will just show you a quick uh, final example here. Um, if your library does you know, decide to add, if you, if you do want to add a data connection to your easy proxy, um, I'm showing you the easy proxy dashboard right here. Um, that is certainly up to each individual library if they do want to purchase an additional additional data source connection over time, it's, it's completely optional. Uh, you can certainly do that. And then once you do that, um, if there are dashboards that are associated with that, well, there will be dashboards associated with that data source, then you would see those dashboards appear in your folder here. So you would then see your easy proxy dashboard. Or if you're using uh, something like SFX or library help, we have connections for those as well and, and, and dedicated dashboards for, for those as well. So thank you for bearing with me um, on that quick tour of Panorama. And I'm just going to wrap this up here before, uh, yeah, we have plenty of time here for, for Q&A and, and your, your feedback and comments. So at the end of the day, you know, Panorama is really designed to help you capture that bigger picture of library engagement. We really want to help streamline your workflows when it comes to doing the kinds of reporting that you need to do. Within Panorama, we are delivering you a platform whereby you know, any librarian who needs to work with data can log into the platform. They can work with the data they need to on demand. Um, so it's self-service in that regard. They can work with their data in a number of uh, the dashboards that we pre-built, uh, many of the ones that I showed you and more. Um, you will have the ability to build your own dashboards or modify any of the ones that we've already built as well. So there are lots of different ways of working with your data and really being able to dig into that. We're trying to automate as much of the process as possible. Again, this is really trying to eliminate really the central pain point when it comes to analytics. We want to automate as much of the process as possible. Let us do the heavy lifting for you so that you can spend more time working with your data, doing the kinds of reports that you need to do. And then finally, Panorama, again, is very customizable. It's extensible. It's really designed to meet your data needs where they are today. But also over time, as those needs might change or evolve, um, you can add additional connections to Panorama, additional data feeds to, to make that system even more robust than it is now. So with that, um, I want to thank you all again so much for your time, your attention, and your patience. I hope you all found that useful. And uh, we have about 20 minutes left, so I'm more than happy to uh, spend the rest of that time uh, answering any questions that, that you may have. So thank you so much. Hey Rob, thanks. Um, so we've been, folks have been posting some questions and I think we actually got answers to quite a few of them. So let me just start at the bottom and then I'll work my way back up. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Simon has asked, will EBSCO uh, be giving us access to the LDP and Folio analytics? Um, it seems that those uh, could potentially fill the gap between Folio's um, sparse in-app reporting options and then Panorama's present day visualization approach? Uh, okay, that is a great question. I am not, I'm not a folio expert. Um, I don't know the answer to that question, but that is certainly an excellent one and we can uh, more than happy to follow up with you on that, Simon. All right, thanks, Rob. Um, some timing questions. Okay, uh, Miriam just asked, uh, which data source connections will be available in Panorama for USG users? Access to all my analytics has already been mentioned, but will there be others? 
Yeah, so starting out out of the gate, um, it will be the five, the five that I mentioned here um, as far as the starting data sources. So that will include your, your ILS, which will be Alma, will be Alma Analytics if you're using that as well. Uh, your counter data, um, interlibrary loan system, whichever one you're using, your reference and instruction um, data, you might, be, you might be getting that via SpringShare, you might be getting that via another system. Um, same thing with gate counts. So we do realize that there will be some variation among the, the Galileo libraries as far as how they're storing um, certain kinds of data like reference and instruction. Um, so it's, that's not going to be uniform. Um, however, we will be working with each library to uh, determine you know, where you're getting that data and so we can put that connection in place. So I'm not sure what UGA has for those things, but um, whatever you are using for those data fields, uh, we will be making those connections. I hope that, hope that helped clarify a bit. Yeah, I think so. And then also, I mean, my own personal comment slash question, uh, Panorama also naturally pulls from EBSCO usage consolidation. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. So that's yep. another source of data there. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, uh, Ken's asking, are non-automated reports possible? For example, uploading data sets from an ad hoc analysis. Yeah, so that is something that we have been working on. Um, a couple of different things worth mentioning here, and we're still relatively early in development for how we're handling non-automated reports within Panorama. So in the first case, if you if a library does have um, a non-automated report, maybe they're storing this, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe they're storing this uh, in a spreadsheet, we can certainly get that into, we can get that data uploaded into, into Panorama. Um, so we do create an FTP folder for each library whenever we start implementation um, and how we have been handling that for customers that do want to upload non-automated data into Panorama. Um, they just FTP that to us and then we can put that into Panorama for, um, for the customer. So it's certainly possible. Uh, ultimately, we're, try we're heading in the direction of um, uh, it, getting to a point where librarians will be able to do that, do that themselves. And if you're also asking about um, non, how we handle non-counter data um, that would not be covered in something like usage consolidation, uh, we actually have been working with a number of libraries recently to uh, basically to build data, uh, data pipelines and dashboards around non-counter data. Um, so, you know, as, as an example, taking <clears throat> excuse me, taking usage data from uh, Canopy and other streaming, you know, other streaming e-resources, uh, working with that data, uh, trying to normalize it as much as possible and and put that data into a, you know, a streaming, a streaming resource specific dashboard. So that is something that we are working on currently with a number of customers. It's not available yet, but we will have that capability um, relatively soon. In my sense, is Panorama um, can I mean is is more um, I, I don't want to say the word useful, but I guess that's the word I've got on the tip of my tongue for reoccurring needs. So if you have a dashboard that's always automatically populating and and refreshing itself with data that's from its sources, is that yes, ex exactly. So all of the data sources that you see in Panorama, these will refresh um, according to the native whatever the native source system is so uh, so for example if it's an IL, if it's alma or if it's folio the dashboards that are pulling data from from folio uh, they will be refreshing every day refreshing daily um, counter reports via something like usage consolidation um, we re those will refresh monthly um, and then so it really does depend on the native the native source system you're exactly right right and then sorry i'm gonna have one more follow-up comment slash question uh also, with the proper uh, Tableau license, is it possible to create custom dashboards? Yes, yes, it certainly is. So we do. I apologize if I didn't didn't mention that when I jumped into the uh, the demo portion, but every library will be um, will be granted a number of different uh, user licenses. Uh, Tableau has a few different user level licenses, so each library will be getting a handful of viewer licenses, which allows you to just go into 
you know, any dashboard and work with the data. You can't can't change anything. You can't modify anything. But each library will also be getting one. Uh, it's called an Explorer license. And what an Explorer license allows the user to do is either create new dashboards from scratch um, or um, they can modify any of the existing dashboards that we've already built. So yes, you certainly do have, if you are Tableau savvy and you want to um, build your own dashboards from scratch, you will certainly be able to do that once uh, once you're on Panorama. Great, thanks, Rob. And you may have mentioned that. Sorry, I was stepped away for a minute. So, um, Melissa had a question. Um, so, I will the ILL dashboard pull information from OCLC's Iliator to Pasa software? Uh, great, great question. Yes. So, uh, let me pull up our interlibrary loan dashboard. So, at the moment, we currently do support uh, to Pasa as an ILL connection. And so that is what, um, that's what you're seeing here in this dashboard. This is our ILL dashboard. Um, this is pulling data from Tapasa. Uh, so just giving you a lot of different, um, you know, borrowing and lending um, statistics. So we're working with Tapasa right now and we are currently developing um, connections with, uh, with Iliad, with Rapid. And I think there's one or two other ILL systems that we also have in development. Um, those are those will be earlier in development, but yes. So we do cover Tapasa at the moment, and we have a few others that are in active development for interlibrary loan connections. All right, thank you. Uh, doo -doo -doo, sorry, I'm working. Uh, Lucy just made a comment. Um, you know, we we got the one Explorer tablet license through y'all with the contract, but if uh, there are only a few hundred dollars to buy extra licenses if we do need them, um, <clears throat> depending on a library's needs. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, a follow-up question on the on the Iliad uh, Tapasa data, uh, does it also pull data from OCLC World Share ILL? That is another that is another system that we're work, we're currently working on too. Yeah, I had blanked on that a few seconds ago, but that's that's one of them. All right, Josh asked if there is a way, a self-service way for libraries to set up new counter slash sushi sources in the usage consolidation, or would that require submitting a ticket to EBSCO? That's a great question. I'm not quite an expert on usage consolidation, but I do believe that um, you are able to, hmm, trying to think of how's the best way to phrase it you are able to work within usage consolidation to um, to do those things, I'm fairly certain, um, but that is a good question. Definitely to, more deserving of the follow-up that um, that I just offered there, but that's something we can certainly look into and, and provide you more information on that. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of blanking on that at the moment. And I guess at the same time, any counter or sushi um, data that we currently have in the Alma environment, we can pull into Panorama once we start that process, I assume. Yes, that would all be pulled into okay. Panorama. Great questions. I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> This is the real hard job, Sean. <laughs> Excuse me. Does anyone have anything else? We've got about 10 minutes left if anybody has any burning questions. So that this came up yesterday, um, Rob, when we were speaking. It, it, I think there's going to be some options for libraries to do sort of comparison reports and um, uh, compare with peers and things like that. So maybe speak to that briefly. Sure. Yeah. Great. Great point. So we have started doing that um, in terms of benchmarking across peer institutions. We have been doing that's that's a project we have been working on with Skelk. Um, John might have might have uh, spoke about this yesterday. But yes, that is something that we we are working on. And if that's something that um, Galileo, if that is a functionality that would be 
valuable to Galileo. That is certainly something that we are going to be happy to work on with you. I know in the case of Skelk, they've been doing benchmarking across um, across iPads, um, a couple of other a couple of other um, metrics as well. So yes, that is that is certainly possible. We know that those use cases are very strong out there, and that's something that we're going to be more than happy to work with you all on um, as we as we get this rolling. Absolutely. The other thing we talked about very, very, and this is the very early stages, but um, mm -hmm. I, I, that EBSCO's in your early stages of talking with some folks about bringing in like student success data as well. So yep. they have the long term the ability to perhaps um, look at how, you know, how, how library data, library usage services are impacting student success. Although obviously there are institutional concerns and privacy concerns around that that would need to be worked out on an institution by institution level. That's exactly well, well put. Yeah, that, that's exactly certainly something that was really a driving force in early panorama development was, you know, what uh, kind of what John saw as the holy grail of panorama was being able to use the platform to link um, usage of the library to things like student success or, or other success, success uh, outcomes based metrics. This is certainly something that we we can do we're more than happy to to work with libraries on this but we have found as you as you mentioned that there are certainly existing concerns around privacy around pii and while we know there are a lot of libraries out there that want to do something like this and i'm just th this is a very um you might have seen this already but this is a very um kind of initial version of our student outcomes dashboard pulling in gray data from banner pulling in um easy proxy data and uh, circ data from from alma so there's lots of different things that are possible within Panorama. A lot of libraries want to do something like this, but they do encounter obstacles when it comes to um, getting buy-in from other entities on campus, whether it's you know campus IT or administration. Um, some of them are very reluctant to you know let a vendor um, work with this kind of with with this kind of data. So it is certainly op the option is very much there uh, for any libraries. Um, any librarians watching this and and if this is something you have been thinking about we're certainly happy to to explore this with you um we just haven't haven't had as many libraries come on board to this sort of thing as as we would have initially hoped because of those you know privacy concerns but um more than happy to uh to work with any library to to address those and and do something really really awesome with outcomes data Any other questions? These have all been fantastic. And those uh, those who did ask a question that I did not have a good answer for, or had no answer, I promise to um, to follow up with you on that. And and Sean, if there are any other questions, um, if you want to send me the list of questions, um, you can cer certainly do that. And if anyone does think of any questions in the meantime, um, I'm more than happy to uh, more than happy to uh, to answer those as well via via email. So. Yep. Absolutely. There was a question about timing earlier, which we answered in the chat, but it might be worthwhile just to reiterate here um, for the recording uh, that our our timing is a little bit TBD. We want to make sure that the committees, the relevant committees, um, Gill committees have an opportunity to, to talk with EBSCO about Panorama and make sure that all their needs, their data reporting and dashboard needs are going to be met. And the earliest that we could possibly have access to Panorama um, and make it available to you would be early spring 2024. And um, hopefully by that summer, we would have everything worked out and up live with um, all of your data sources. All right, thank you for that, Lucy. All right, well, thank you so much, Rob. We appreciate this. Uh, again, if anybody has questions, they wanna send them to me, I can be a clearinghouse for that, or it sounds like uh, you can send them on to Rob as well, but um, All right. either way I think would work, but I don't mind uh, gathering those together for you, Rob, if that would be useful. Um, Great. Everybody knows sean.boyle at uga.edu. You can just reach out to me. Um, but again, thanks, Rob, appreciate your time. Extremely helpful. My pleasure. Uh, all right, everyone, thank you very much All for right. attending. We'll see you at 11 a.m. for our next session. Thanks so much, everyone. Appreciate the opportunity. Take care.